Good feet, everybody. Is anybody glad to be in the house of God tonight? Are you glad to be in the house of God tonight? Come on, you can do better than that. Is anybody glad to be in the house of God tonight? The Bible says in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. And I'm glad that I'm in God's house to have joy tonight. Is anybody ready to worship God? If you're ready to worship, why don't you give the Lord a shout and a praise of victory? good and this mercy endures forever. Sing, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Sing, Lord, you are good, yeah. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Sing, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good. You are good. Lord, you are
How many believe he's worthy? What's the highest praise? What's the highest praise? Somebody shout hallelujah. stretch both of your hands to the king tonight if you believe that he's worthy just begin to express that out of your heart he's a worthy God he's worthy of all praise glory and honor he's worthy to be praised honored and adored we worship you tonight Jesus we praise you Lord for your awesome greatness, for your insurmountable greatness, Father. We love you, Jesus. 
So tonight, God, we're here to cry out of our hearts that you are awesome, that you are worthy of our praise, that you're worthy of our honor. You're worthy of everything, Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. My God is awesome. He can do. Hide me from the rain. And hide me from the rain. My God, is, my God is all heals me when I'm broken. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I'm. Strength where I can be. Forever He will reign. me when I'm broken. Strength where I of the whole world. Savior of the whole Giver of salvation. Giver of salvation. By his strength. His strength oh. me. My God. My God Guess what? Awesome. Today you're forgiven. Today I am forgiven. His grace is wide. His grace is wide. Somebody ought to praise him.
in this house. Hallelujah. Oh, I hope you're ready tonight. I hope you're ready to be responsive. I hope you're ready to respond to God's presence. Are you ready tonight? Amen. Amen. Well, before you're seated, turn to the person next to you and just ask them, are you ready for a move of God tonight? And find your way back to your seat. We're excited and honored that you'd be with us at Cathedral of Praise on Sunday evening so many other places that you could be and you chose to be in the house of God and in the presence of God tonight. We're excited that you're here. If you're a guest visiting with us in service, we're honored and excited you're here. We actually have a a gift that we'd like to drop by your house tomorrow. It's something you will not want to miss. Can I get an amen? amen? It's something you won't want to miss, but we need you to do something. Right in front of you, there's what we call a connect card. If you wouldn't mind, grab it, fill it out, and drop it in the offering bucket as it goes by, and we'll make sure that that special gift ends up on your doorstep tomorrow. Amen? Let me have the ushers come on forward. Tonight is a very special night. If if you didn't know or if you didn't read on your way in tonight, we have a special musical guest. Martha Manuzzi is with us tonight, and we are excited about all that God is doing. But before that, we are going to start our worship by giving of our tithe and our offering. Everyone say the word measure. measure. Now, measuring is something that's very important. And for those of you who bake a lot, you know that there's a big difference between one teaspoon and one tablespoon. Amen. Amen. One teaspoon and one tablespoon can mean the entire difference between a good recipe and an extremely bad turnout. An extremely bad turnout. You see, measuring is something that's very, very important. And scripture tells, talks to us a little bit about something about how God measures when we measure. If you take a look at Luke chapter 6, verse 38, and it says this. This is a very familiar passage. I want you to take a look at the end of this. It says, give and gifts will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will they pour the pouch formed by the bosom of your robe and used as a bag. For, the me- for with the measure you deal out, with the measure you use when you confer benefits on others, it will be measured back to you. If you decide to use a certain form of measuring to God, God will make sure that that same form of measuring is used when he returns the gift back to you. You know, when I read this verse, I see in my spirit some people coming to church and they have their little teaspoons here and they're just stingy, little, I'm not sure if God's going to come through and they'll just fill out their little teaspoons and these are the same people that will look at the aisle over and ask themselves, why is that person so blessed? Well, because they used a dump truck when they came to church today. Because when they came, they came ready to bless the Lord because he has been faithful and will continue to be faithful. Those are the people who understand that when I use this measure to pour out to God, God will use that same measure to pour back into me. And tonight as you give, I want you to give encouraged. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. We're going to skip to the last one here. Verse 8. And I want you to hear this as you give tonight. It says, and God is able. Everyone say he's able. He's able. God is able to make all grace. That means every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be, 
self-sufficient, and that means possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance. Everyone say abundance. Abundance, abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Tonight, what is the need? The need is that we have people in the church and we have the church itself who come in this place and are blessed. We're giving and where finances are not an issue. Why? Because they are faithful in their giving. What would happen if we had an entire church that acted and responded in obedience? What could we do? Tonight, I want you to hold your gift in your hand and let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for all that you're about to do, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness when we give. Now, Lord, I pray that you would bless both the gift and the giver. We love you and we thank you tonight in your name. And the church said, be blessed as you give tonight. tonight you may take your seat amen 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 anybody believe that God is here do you really believe it 
Amen, amen. We're so glad and delighted to have a special guest tonight. She, as well as her sister Mary, has been a great inspiration to worship leaders like myself. Uh, they have, have written some amazing songs, and uh, the one thing I like about them is they write songs that are singable. <laughs> they write songs that are singable, but they, all, they also have a sound doctrine. A lot of songs you hear today, they're either singable and, and it don't really mean too much, or vice versa. But uh, we're so glad to have Martha Menizzi here tonight. She is a, go ahead, give her a hand. She is a world-renowned worship leader. She has, has worked with many artists. She's done the numerous things. She's been nominated for Dove, uh, Grammys as well. Uh, and she is just a great woman of God. She, she, she practices what she, she uh, sings about. And I found out something else about her yesterday. She likes Jim and Nick's now. <laughs> so that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good conversational thing with us now. So why don't you stand to your feet and welcome Martha Munizzi. keep those hands together and just give God the praise, give him the glory, give him the honor. This is your anniversary. It's time to celebrate the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God. Somebody just lift up a shout of praise real good, just real loud. Woo! What an awesome God we serve. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. I know this is a special day, and it is such an honor for us to be here on such a special occasion. And I just believe that the, the, the future is going to get better and brighter and greater. It's just the beginning of what God wants to do in your house, in your church, in your ministry. Do you all believe that tonight? Now, did you come to, did you come to just kind of let your hair down a little bit and just enjoy God's presence? If you came for a concert, you might be disappointed. Because I can't promise I'm going to sing the song you expect me to sing or the one you are. I'm going to do my best. The choir is going to help me, right? But if you came for an experience and an encounter with God, then you came to the right place. Because that's what we're about. Ushering in the presence of God and connecting with Him. And I believe that on a Sunday night at 6.30 in Memphis, Tennessee, we can connect with God and be transformed right where we are. I'm hungry for a God encounter. I want to celebrate him. I want to, I want to sing of his mercy, of his goodness. I just want to know if there's any radical people in the place tonight that came for a God encounter. Come on, let's give him the praise. Let's give him the glory. Let's give him the honor. We've come into this place to lift up the name of Jesus. Let's do like David did. David said, I will bless the Lord at... His praise will be in my mouth. And the Bible says, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Now, I looked up that word rejoice, and you know what it means? Rejoice means to brighten up. Look at your neighbor and say brighten up. Look at somebody else and say brighten up. Smile a little bit. If you're happy, notify your face. And rejoice means to spin around. I want everybody to just turn around right where you stand. Come on, turn around. And as you turn around, just get a revelation that your circumstances are turning around. Come on, that your finances are turning around. That your relationships are turning around. That your destiny is turning around. And then it means to leap for joy. I want to see everybody just leap for joy. Come on, leap for joy in this place. Now you're rejoicing. So at any time tonight you feel like rejoicing, just smile and spin around and leap for joy. God inhabits the praises of his people. Come on, let's rejoice tonight. Let's do like David did. Come on, let's do like David did. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. And let's make his praise glorious. Come on. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, 
Shut your troubles. Shut your troubles fall behind you. Don't you wait another minute. Come on, get up on Just your feet. Get up
earth now rejoice. All the nations of the earth now rejoice. All the people of God sing his praise. celebrate a little bit tonight. Can we just keep celebrating a little bit? Because I see all these young people down here, and I know they came to just dance and have a good time and enjoy. Right? Y'all don't have anything against dancing. It's Sunday night. Did I come to the right place? Because we know that dancing is really a weapon. Dancing is not for us to look cute. Dancing is a weapon. It's a part of our worship. It's a part of our warfare. Because if the enemy can steal anything, he'll take your joy. If he can take your joy, he can take anything. 
That's what he goes after. If he can, if he can rob you of joy. See, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, when I think about what he's brought me through, yeah. when I hear a little bit of music, it just makes me feel like dancing. Yeah. I could dance the night away. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's called freedom. Somebody shout freedom. freedom. And I know I came to a free place tonight. I know this yeah. place is, I know your pastors. And I know how they are. So this is a house of freedom. So can we just go ahead and just, see, this is what happens. I usually say this song to the end once we've got everybody stirred up. But I feel like it's a good song to do right now because y'all are ready. Are y'all ready? Yeah. I think, I think this is not, I, this, this, the time has come for us to just knock the devil in the head yes. with a loud praise, with a shout of joy, with a shout of victory. Come on, are y'all ready? Now, I want to know in this building, in this room right now, where are all the loud people? I'm feeling, oh, oh, are there some over here, a little bit loud people? I'm talking about the kind of people that your mama says, please be quiet. You're just naturally loud. Everywhere you go, you're at Walmart and you're talking too loud. You just can't quiet down. Just your, is that you? You just have a built-in megaphone. Who is that? Who is that? That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people in this room. All right, well, I'm one of those people too. I like to be loud. My kids will say, Mother, please stop singing. I'm like, why? I love to sing. We're in Target. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't help it. It just bubbles out and flows out of you when you're just kind of having a good day and giving God the praise. So this song is for all the people who are unashamed to share and talk about what Jesus has done for you. All the loud people. And it's just titled, Make It Big, Make It Loud. It's time to tell the world about Jesus. Can we get radical right here? I don't want to play games tonight. I want us to celebrate. Come on. Here we go. Make it big, make it loud, shout it all around the world. All around the world, let the people celebrate. Make it big, make it loud, shout it all around the world. All around the world, let the people celebrate. Come on, sing. Oh, make it big, make it loud, shout it all around 
about what God has done, what God is doing, and what God is going to do. And that's what praise is all about. It's thanking God for what he's done, for what he's doing, and what he's going to do. I want you to stop for a minute and think about what God has done and give him praise. Come on, give him praise for what he's done. Come on, give him praise for what he's done. That's, that's not very good. That's all right. I'm talking about just begin to think about what God has done. He healed you. He set you free. He got you this far. He's made a way in time of trouble. Now I want you to begin to thank God for what he's doing right now. Think about what he's doing in your life. Just begin to give him praise for what he's doing. God, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you're doing that we can see. We thank you that our bills are paid. We thank you that you've made a way. We thank you that every morning we wake up and there's new mercies waiting on us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. We give you glory. Now I want you to begin to thank God for what he's going to do. Come on, don't hold back. Don't hold back. Thank God for what he's going to do. By faith we receive what God is going to do. Greater things are on the way. Greater things are on the way. God is preparing things. The Bible says that it hasn't even entered into our minds what God has prepared. That's why we can get loud about what Jesus has done. A real worshiper stops and says, you know what? I don't, I'm not really moved by what I see. I'm not really going to worry about what I'm hoping for. I'm going to begin to thank God for what he's already done. There's power in your praise. When you begin to recount, David said, I will recount and tell aloud all the great things God has done for me. We get caught up in the moments and in those lands of waiting for things. We want to we see things. We get upset. We get frustrated. We get yeah. aggravated. A friend of mine called me the other day, and he said, you know, I just want to tell you. He said, I, I, I was really hoping God was going to do some things, and I got frustrated. It didn't happen, and I, and I fell into a bad relationship, and it almost killed me. And he said, and the only reason I fell into it is because I just, I just got so frustrated that things I was waiting on God for weren't happening. So I moved out without God, and now I'm paying the price. But a worshiper is protected. A worshiper, a praiser that wakes up every day and says, wait a minute. 
wait a minute, God, I'm going to give you the praise. I'm not moving by what I see. I'm trusting you every single day. And a true worshiper says, God, if you never do one more thing, if another door never opens, if everything you're going to do, you've already done for me, and I'm not one, I mean, if that's it, I still don't have enough time and enough days and enough hours in what I have left to thank you for what you've already done. Hallelujah. People, those of us that are parents, we, we enjoy grateful children, don't we? Don't we enjoy children that are grateful? They say, Mom, thank you for making dinner tonight. Mom, thank you, thank you for cleaning up the kitchen. Mom, thank you for doing my laundry. Mom, th how many of you ever hear your kids say that? A couple people. Tell me how you did it. No, I'm kidding. But most kids, we just they take it for granted. Mom will do it. Mom will fix it. Daddy will be there. But when you have a child that comes and says, I just want to say thank you for all that you do, your heart swells. You get glory in that. You realize I've done something right. My child gets it. Pride swells up and wells up in your heart. The same with us when we, when we go to God and say, God, thank you for what you've done. I want, to, I want to just take the day and just go down the list and just thank you. I know I go down my list of everything I'm asking for, but can I just go down a list and just thank you for what you've already done? Can we rehearse and be disciplined enough to really give God the praise he, for what he's already done? I just feel somebody tonight needs to rehearse and be like David. Thank him for what he's already done. If you want him, thank him. If you need his presence, worship him yeah. and thank him for what he's done already. How many of you can say he's done more for you than you ever deserved? Yes. Thank you, Lord. When you really think about it, God is so good. Yes. And you know, we don't serve a God that's just giving out a handout. He's not, he's not saying, well, all right, I guess you get it because you ask enough here. No, God responds to worship. God responds to praisers. God shows up for praisers. He comes down off of his holy hill. David said, I cried out to God and he heard me and he came down from his holy hill and he came to where I was and he lifted me up out of the miry pit and he set me on a high place. Thank you, God, that you come and rescue us. Our worship is what lifts us up. Our praise is the language of heaven. I want us to spend these next few moments just going after God with all that we have. If you're young, Whatever age you are, this is the time. This is the moment. Go after him. Seek him. He's there. I just believe for a revival, a refreshing to flow through this place tonight of worship. When worshipers arise, say, God, this is it. I'm not waiting for a better moment. I'm not waiting for a better song, a better singer. I'm going to take this moment right now and engage and go in because I need you. Anybody need him tonight? Let's just begin to worship him. Father, we thank you for this time of celebration. We thank you for this time of joy. We thank you that we can set an atmosphere for your glory, for your presence. And God, right now, we lift up our hands, we open up our hearts, and we come boldly before your throne. We love you and we praise you, not for what you can do for us, but for who you are. We give you praise. We give you glory. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's worship together. Hey, yeah. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of who you are, let's sing it to him. Jesus. Because of who you are. Because of who you are. 
worship in this atmosphere. Thank you, God. Danielle. Your love, oh God, is deeper than the oceans. It's greater than the skies. It's an all-consuming fire. Your love will never die. And your heartbeat controls every ocean's roll. It's your love, oh God. It's your love, oh God. Yeah. It saves my soul. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It saves my soul. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Let's sing that again. Oh, your love, oh God, is deeper than the oceans. It's greater than the skies and all-consuming fire. A love that will not die. Your heartbeat controls every ocean's roar. It's your love, oh God. Your love, oh God, it saves my soul. Saves my soul. See, it's your love. Oh, 
It's your love that my heart beats for. It reaches out to me more and more. Let's sing that again. Oh, it's your love that my heart beats for. It reaches out to me more. and worship and speak life over her generation. I love these young people down here and the way they worship. They're passionate. They're intense about their love for God. That is so important. When you begin to see a move of God in the young people, you know that God is moving across the land. 
He's moving. Young people are, are, are being driven back to the house of God. There's a passion. It's cool to be spiritual again. Aren't you glad? Used to be old fashioned, old fogey, as my mama used to say, but it's cool to be spiritual again. It's popular now to be passionate for God. It's a great thing, and I love it. I love what God is doing, and I believe that we adults need to continue to pour in and prophesy. And you know what else I think we ought to do? We ought to get out of their way. We got to get out of their way. We got to let we got to let the God in them flow through and let them lead and let them get in front. I'm telling you, we will see a revival in our nation when the young people when these when this age group right here realizes who they are and the power that they have, the greatness that's on the inside of them. We will see a move of God and it's awakening in the hearts of our young people today. Millions of young people all over this world are being awakened by the spirit of God. There's a passion that's stirring on the inside of you. There's a, there's a heart. There's a desire to know God in an intense way. I love it. You, you don't even worry about who's watching or, 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 or looking up at the stage and seeing who's worshiping. You guys just go in. You know how to worship. That blesses me. That blesses me. Does that bless you? People who are hungry for God, get him. People that go after him, find him. And if you want him, listen, the rules apply no matter how old you get. It doesn't change. If you want him, go after him. Seek him and you will find him. Knock and the door will be open. Ask and you will receive. There's an open heaven that we live under. There's a dispensation of grace and mercy. And when we just begin to receive it and say, God, I receive it. These young people are down here saying, I want you. I desire you. I've got to have you. I want to worship you. They just get it. This choir up here, there's a passion that's flowing from this stage and from everyone in their seats. I'm telling you, the presence of God is in this place. And if you'll go after him with intensity, if you'll just make a decision that I can't live one more day without knowing him, without seeking him, without feeling him, God will show up for you. God will move in your life. And I believe that the chains that we have, we've been singing chains and how we, we the ch- take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. Yeah. Let me tell you, you hold the key to every shackle. Most of the shackles that, that are around our feet, we put them on ourselves. Tell the truth and shame the devil. We wake up every morning to new mercies or the same bondage we went to sleep with. Which one are you going to put on? Which one will you partake of? Will you wake up in the morning and say, no, I'm going to leave that heaviness right where it is, and I'm going to put on a garment of praise. I'm going to pick up this pile of new mercies that's been waiting on me, that God's been building all night long. He's been preparing for me, and I'm going to wake up and receive mercy, or am I going to continue to walk in lack? Am I going to continue to walk in heaviness and burden? See, the burden that you're carrying, if it's too heavy, it's not God's burden for you, because his yoke is easy. His burden is light. So when you begin to throw off that burden, I want you to just begin to throw that burden off. Just throw off that heaviness. You weren't meant or built to carry it. Come on, y'all, just throwing it off. Throw it off. And just begin to receive the grace of God, the mercies of God that are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And I want Danielle to begin to just minister. I want you to sing this song that you've been singing. Because I believe there's a, there's a breaking in this house. Yes. We didn't come, I'm telling you, we did not come to sing yes. a few pretty songs and go sit down. Uh-huh. Amen? Amen? There's a pushing in the spirit. There's a yes. desire to go yes. somewhere that we've never been, and we are going to go tonight. Yes. I'm telling you, God wants to do something in this place. Are you ready? Yes. Come on, just begin to receive. Just begin to receive in this moment. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, Danielle. Thank you, Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, to break every. 
every chain. Come on. To break every chain. To break every chain. Let's see that again. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. He's an all sufficient sacrifice. So freely given unto me, it's such a price. You bought all of my transgressions. Yeah. 
broken. Every chain is broken. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus, our Savior, went to the cross. And he took stripes on his back. He wore a crown of thorns, beaten, hung on a cross. And he did it out of love. He did it to break chains of bondage. He did it because he wanted to conquer hell, conquer death. And he did it yes. for people who didn't even exist yet. Come on. Yes. Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes. 
people who weren't even born yet. He did it for us. And if it had just been one, he would have done it for the one. That's the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get the picture of Jesus dying, shedding his blood. There's power in the blood. There's power in the name of Jesus. We don't use that name flippantly. We don't just, we don't just practice church. We are the church. We don't talk about change. We are the change. And for those of us that maybe have gone through some trials or maybe you're going through something right now, when you're going through a difficult time, the enemy is waiting to shackle you. The enemy is waiting to weigh you down with the cares of this world, with burdens and trials. But the key to breakthrough is the word of God. Key to breakthrough is the worship, is praise out of our mouths, out of our lips. You know this. And I began to go back several years ago. I began to go through a difficult season of my life. And I don't even know why. Just an attack. It was a spiritual attack. I don't, there's no reason. Nothing was going wrong. It just hit me out of nowhere. It yes. seemed like, what is this heaviness? I couldn't shake it. I couldn't get through it. I thought if I drank more coffee, it would help. It just made me more irritated. But you know what I did? I began to go back to the word of God. I'm not preaching tonight. Don't, don't let this atmosphere change. I, I just, this scripture is something that's blessed me, these scriptures, and blessed me to keep me from allowing the enemy to shackle me. When I face a difficult situation, when I face a difficult trial, or maybe something's not happening as quickly as I would like for it to. Yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And in 2 Corinthians... One, starting with verse 17, and I love this. This is my foundation scripture. When I'm in doubt, I go back to the word. Amen. And it says in the Message Bible, are you now going to accuse me of being flipped with my promises because it didn't work out? Do you think I talk out of both sides of my mouth? A glib yes one moment and a glib no to the next? Well, you're wrong. I try to be as true to my word as God is to his. Our word to you wasn't a careless yes, canceled by an indifferent no. Come on. How could it be when Silas and Timothy and I proclaimed the Son of God among you, did you pick up on any yes and no, on again, off again, waffling? <laughs> Was it in a clean, strong yes? Somebody shout yes. Yes. Whatever God has promised gets stamped with the yes of Jesus. Whatever God has promised gets stamped with the yes of Jesus. Yes. In him. This is what we preach and pray. The great amen. God's yes and our yes together gloriously evident. When God says yes and we in, in response say yes to him, it flows together and everybody can see it. We're working and walking under an open heaven. The yes of heaven. Somebody shout yes. God's yes and our yes Together, gloriously evident. God affirms us, making us a sure thing in Christ. Yeah. Well, I thought y'all shout about that. Yes, yes. God affirms us. How many need some affirmation tonight? Yes. Tell you it's going to be all right. Yes. How many of you need to hear that God said, I'm working it out? Yes. What you're believing for, I'm going to make it. I'm going to do it. Don't you worry. God affirms us. That's what it, I didn't say it. That's what the word says. Making us a sure thing in Christ. Putting his yes within us. Amen. Amen. Come on, look at, look at your neighbor and say, God's yes, yes. God's yes is in you. God's yes is in you. I like yes people. I try to stay away from no people. Aren't you glad you don't serve a no God? 
His answer is always yes. See, you ought to just relax in that and just say, it's always yes. God always says yes. Have you ever had a parent that no matter what, you, they just, you just know they're going to say yes? Have you ever had a parent, no matter what you ask, they're going to say no? <laughs> now, now that you can relate to. But if you have a parent that just says, oh, yes, 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 yes. You're not worried about it because you know mom will say yes. Mom will let me do it. Mom will let me have it. God says yes. We get stuck on the when and the where and the how. We just have to believe and know God said yes. Am I healed? Am I saved? Am I free? Do, am I clothed in my, in my right mind? Do, have, do I have access to peace? What about joy? Come on. Yes. Can God heal my marriage? Yes. Will God heal it? Yes. Will he put the pieces back together of a broken heart? Yes. Will he make a way where there seems to be no way? Yes. Will he conquer? Yes. David says, shall I go up and recover all? Shall I go up and fight? God said, yes, you'll go up, you'll fight, and you'll recover. You'll take it all back. God's answer is always now, why is it that we kind of get stuck and it doesn't seem like God said yes? Come on. Sometimes he just says, but not yet. Mm -hmm. The answer's yes, but just hold on. Yeah. Keep praising me. Yeah. Keep worshiping me. Yeah. Don't let chains get wrapped around your feet. Just keep, just keep singing of my goodness and my yeah. greatness yeah. and my mighty power and my answer. Just keep saying yes to me. Because my answer is yes to you. There's a yes in this place. There's a yes in this room. Somebody that wants to say yes to God. I want you to get up on your feet in this place. Lift up your hands and just begin to say, God, yes. Yes, I say yes to worship. I say yes to praise. I say yes to obedience. I will do life the way you've ordained it. I won't take it into my own hands. I will serve you. And I say yes. Somebody shout yes. Hallelujah. By his spirit, he, is a, he has stamped us with his eternal pledge, a sure beginning of what he is destined to complete. When I read that scripture, I knew I don't have anything to worry about. The word of God is true. I've got to stand and believe it and declare it until I die. That God promises to finish what he started. And he has stamped every promise he's given me with a clean, strong, yes, somebody shout yes. yes. You ought to rejoice right now. You ought to give God the praise. His answer is yes. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whew. Do you love God's presence? Yes. So I just think the word yes is a much better word than no. We hear no all the time. We've got to be yes people. Just look at somebody around you and just say yes. Just say yes. See, you even smile when you say yes. You just smile when you say yes. Yes is an automatic smile. Yes, I'll serve. Yes, I'll give my time. Yes, I'll give my finances. Yes, I'll be obedient. Yes, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Because you've already said yes to me, so my answer to you is yes. Somebody's going to get this tonight. Don't just keep waiting on God's yes. You need to say yes. Somebody's been pulling on, God's been pulling on you to get involved and serve somehow in the ministry. You need to say yes. Don't hold back. You need to jump in and say yes. Young people, your answer is yes. I told Danielle the other day, she was getting ready to move into uh, working with somebody on songs and ministry and recording. And she said, I don't know. This is brand new. Should I do it? I said, Danielle, your answer during this season of your life is yes. I'll go anywhere. I'll do anything. God, I just want to surrender. I want you to use me. My answer is yes. If his answer is yes, my answer is yes. Come on, lift up those hands in this place. Let's just give God the praise just for a few more moments.
Just let him, let him tenderize your heart. Let him speak to you. Let him show you those answers that maybe those places that you've resisted and he's saying, I need a yes from you. My yes is hanging over your head and if you'll just begin to say yes, they'll merge together and you'll begin to see favor flowing. If you'll just say yes to me, then my yes over you will connect with your yes and favor will begin to come. Open doors will begin to be, to be open for you. Just say yes. God, we say yes. We say yes. We say yes. Come on, just a few more seconds. Just, just press in just a little bit longer. This is a night of worship, and when we worship God, He transforms us. He changes us. He takes us from glory to glory. Let's not get in a hurry. Let's not rush out of here. Let's give God the time He needs to move and to show Himself and reveal Himself to us. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes, we say yes. We say yes. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, we worship you. In the sanctuary we worship. In this place we worship you, oh God. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's sing. How great is our God. Come on. And sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see. How great, how great is our God. Come on, sing it out. Come on, sing how great. Oh, how great is our God. Sing with me. Yes, he is. 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 Y
We love you guys, and we appreciate you so much. And, um, you know, I just believe that with every anniversary, God has something greater in store. And there's a richness and a heritage here that God is going to bless. When you declare the greatness of God, he's attracted to praise. He's attracted to worshipers. And worship that goes out of this house, God just looks for it. He comes down and says, I want to bless those people. I want to favor those people. You feel the presence of God in this place? Amen. Come on, just give God one more big shout of praise. And my heart will see. See, sometimes when trials and troubles and the devil just seems bigger and he's looming, you need to look at the devil and you need to say, yes, he is. And no, you're not. So shut up. Come on, you can't give God praise and hear the devil talk at the same time. So when you're giving God praise, it shuts the devil up. That's how powerful your praise is. Amen? Yeah. I want to tell you real quickly before we, we go, I have some phenomenal people with me. You've met a few of them, a couple of them. But I want to let you know my husband, Dan Unizzi, is here. We've been married 26 years in June. I think that's pretty good. And we travel full-time. We've been traveling. This is, I think, our 12th or 13th year traveling full-time in ministry. And God has just opened doors and blessed us in such a, an amazing way. And, you know, when you just obey God, young people, when you just do it God's way, he opens doors. 
people ask me all the time, how did you do it? And how do I get my songs heard? And how do I get seen? And heard? Listen, you can't, people will say, how, what if I'm being overlooked? I'm in a church and I'm being overlooked. I said, listen, let me tell you something. That's impossible. If God's planted a gift and an, and an ability and anointing in you, you just hold on and be faithful. Keep showing up. And God will promote you in his time, in his season. You can't be overlooked. That's a word for somebody. Hand on my hip, fingers pointing. You just need to, you need to relax and be faithful. Keep it, well, how long? As long as it takes. Because while you're being faithful, God's grooming you and positioning you and preparing you and building you for what he has for you. You just keep being faithful. You stay planted. Young people, stay planted in the house. God will use you in his time, in his season. Just keep showing up. Look at somebody next to you and say, just keep showing up. Don't give up. Don't quit. Just be there. God loves faithfulness. He loves a servant's heart. And, and my husband, he just keeps showing up every day. And I'm so grateful that he does. And then our daughter, Danielle, you met Danielle. <laughs> and she's anointed, and she's working on a, a CD right now, an EP, actually, that will be out really soon. She likes to shake things up a little bit. She is a modern-day prophet. She's not as much like her mama. She likes to, like, just go out on the, ed on the edge a little bit, and I love that. And God is still developing her, but she was in school, and she said, you know, Mom, I really feel like I'm supposed to come home for a minute and serve you. And so she's out on the road with us working hard. We're dragging her all over the place. And she does everything. She works our product table. She makes, she drags bags. She make, but it's all good because God is preparing. She's in the preparation stage. And I, and I just say, the harder you work, the more blessed you get. So she's doing it. She's like, well, where's the blessing? Uh, but no, God is blessing her with anointing and gifting. And I'm so grateful that she's with us. And then right next to her, you heard him sing tonight. This is Minister Eric Green. He's anointed. And I'm, I'm just so honored to be able to travel with great godly people. I wouldn't have it any other way. And I just want to say thank you to these amazing pastors. We've, we've go, we go back a long way. And um, I stay in touch, and I know what's going on, and I pray for you. And I'm so grateful for the longevity in ministry. Thank you for not giving up. Thank you for sticking it out and being an example to the rest of us of how to do it and do it well. I know it's not perfect, but you do it well. And we, we just appreciate it. And Devin, thank you so much for making this happen. Man, you, you can sing. And you're anointed. We have some CDs in the back. We've got a few things. Danielle's going to bring that up and let you talk about it a little bit. We have a CD called Change the World that will bless you our, and uh, No Limits and The Best Yet to Come. But what we really have and we want to let you know about is our brand new CD called Make It Loud. And we already did Make It Loud. We usually end with Make It Loud, but y'all were being so good, I kind of bit it up at the front. But uh, this song is just, it's really, God is using it um, to really, you know, I, I was going through, some, my daughters a few years ago were saying, Mom, have, do you realize what's happening all, happening in music and the culture, in pop culture, the music and the opinions that are just being spread and that it's literally changing, changing the minds of our young people and the hearts of our young people just through music. And I got so, I got so frustrated by it as a mom. I said, well, this is lies. You know, I was born this way and you don't need Jesus and all of these crazy things that were being sung about images and all these things and I went to the Lord and I said okay now I'm mad what do I do do I write a book do I write a blog do I make a statement what do I do and he said no just keep writing songs that magnify me and lift me up and I'll draw you just go and get your pen and piece of paper and start developing and writing songs that talk about my power and how I'm the only God that can heal I'm the only God that can save and when you begin to lift me up just make it a little bit louder than you've ever made it before. And that's where this whole album came from. Uh, William McDowell is on here. Jonathan Stockstill. Daniel Eric Groves. Danielle Munizzi is on here. Uh, Michael Gunger sings a song on here with me that he and I wrote. It will bless you. It's not just for young people. It's for all ages. There's something on here for everybody that will bless you. So get it. It's in the back. We've got it. 
for you tonight, and our DVDs are available. Have you enjoyed tonight? Have you enjoyed God's presence? Amen. Amen. Well, it's already 8 o'clock. How did that happen? Pastor, do I need to turn it back over to you now? Are we all kind of just chilling? Because I could sing one more song, but only if it's not too late. You're going to take the, oh, we have to do it in order, in decency. Why don't, you, why don't you get up on your feet and put your hands together for your pastor as he comes. <laughs> Celebrate him. It has been a great night, hasn't it? I always uh, am blessed when I hear Martha is a real worshiper of God. Her passion is so attractive. And the whole family. And this is Danielle. You've grown up so much. The last time you guys were here, she was like trying to like uh, say to her brother, hey, you're not cute, shut up, sit down. <laughs> Remember that? She still does that. And, uh, she still does that. We're glad that they have come to be with us. And uh, not too long ago, Dan, a couple weeks ago, Dan had a birthday. Yeah. And then he posted a picture on Facebook. Of, did you do that? Who put that picture of him on Facebook? He did. I'm telling you, you have done a great job on this man. <laughs> I saw that, that wild, rebellious... Dan and I said, thank God for Martha. And he threatened to grow it all back. Oh, well. I said, oh, no, no. <laughs> he had long hair. I believe like we have a Samson and Delilah story here. I'm not for sure. Well, it's been a great night. I was just thinking a moment ago is uh, we had the joy of being in Nashville a week or so ago. The funeral of a friend of mine, J.R. Gould, as he passed away. And it was a celebration of his life. Afterwards, we had the joy of meeting our daughter and son-in-law and uh, uh, two granddaughters. And uh, they said, where do you want to eat? And I remember what Dr. Garrett, you said to me, Chewy's. So we all went out to Chewy's and ate Mexican restaurant. That was a great restaurant, good food. And uh, my wife had prepared birthday gifts from both of my granddaughters. Their birthdays are in the month of May. And uh, they were so excited to see us and we greeted them. But the, the moment we pulled the presents out and we uh, gave my youngest granddaughter her presents, she had some, oh, I don't know, all kinds of stuff that Darlene had gotten for her. And she hugged us and thanked us and hugged us and thanked us. And then all of a sudden, our oldest granddaughter, she opened her gifts. And I had gotten her some nice earbuds, the beat kind, you know. And uh, when she opened those, when she saw those earbuds, it was like, Grandpa, how did you know? You're so old. How did you know this is what I wanted? And I said, well, I've just been watching young people. I thought you would like that. It was um, it was a gift I gave freely because I loved my granddaughters. When we come to this place of giving to God, it should never be because we have to. It's because we get to give. This wonderful family, and yes, we have known each other for a long time. I first met Martha's dad in Alabama when he was a pastor and I was a youth pastor. And Martha, you and your sister were little bitty girls. And I have noticed over the years how that God could entrust some more of the most phenomenal songs, many songs that they have written and sang. And I have noticed how that they have taken their talent and used it for the glory of God. Now tonight, I come to you to ask you tonight, would you be generous in an investment toward Martha and this wonderful family? She already set me up for the offering. The word is, 
Let's try that again. The word is, and I'd like to ask you to join with me. I've got, got an offering of at least 50 bucks here tonight. I already got it in my hand. Carol, would you and Capri match that, please? And the answer is, I just thought I'd throw that out there. It was timely. Well, you know, it's easy for us to say, now, okay, God, the answer is yes. But when we have to dig in our pockets, sometimes it's no, isn't it? And it really is a promise that God has given to us that can't be fulfilled until we learn an area of obedience. Ushers, come, would you? Every dime of this offering, every dime of this offering will go to this wonderful family. I want you to get your offering out. Come on. I want everyone to give because there is a need tonight. And I want you to give liberally. And I want you to be blessed. Here's the good news. You can't outgive God. You can't outgive God. I don't know what I could give to my granddaughters, but it would never be enough because they're the love of my life. When you're just in love with Him, I'm telling you, whatever it is you're giving is never enough. Given it shall be given unto you. Father, what a joy it is to know, Lord, that I can plant a seed in this wonderful family's ministry. And that because I'm obedient, I'm faithful to you. That God, you'll not only bless this seed and bless this family, but you'll bless the hands that has given it tonight. I pray, Lord Jesus, that tonight will be a significant light, night in somebody's life when we say yes to you, that you will open those windows of heaven and pour out blessings we're not able to contain. Thank you, Lord, for this, this wonderful, obedient family of God who truly loves you and are worshipers of yours. God, I pray that you will bless them, not only financially, but bless them physically, bless them emotionally, bless them spiritually. I pray, God, that their latter years will be greater than their former years. I don't know how you're going to do it, Father, but I pray that you would just simply let this sweet anointing of your Holy Spirit Go before them and do a work that they cannot do. I give you honor, and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you as you give. i got to sing. By the way, you didn't call me. <laughs> we can sing that. No, let's, I want to leave with, with a shout. Can we leave with a shout? Y'all aren't tired, are you? No. Once you've given, I want you to stand to your feet. The Bible says to shout with a voice of triumph. David ran to the battle. He didn't, he didn't tiptoe to the battle. He ran with a roar to the battle. Why? Because he knew that he had to outpace his enemy. He knew that he had to intimidate his enemy before his enemy destroyed him. And we've got to get that kind of that kind of thing on the inside of us that says we're ready to shout and run to the battle. Come on, y'all. You ready to run to the battle? Shout with the voice of triumph. We're triumphant in battle. We are victorious. God is most high over all the earth. Come on, the enemy is defeated. He's under our feet. It's time for us to shout about it. Come on, say, hey. shout. Put those hands together, yeah, yeah. Come on, let me hear you say shout. So I will shout with a voice Here we go, here we go. Right here. So I will shout with a voice of triumph, yeah.